Hello, friends. I'm so happy to be with you again today. Uh, all over the world, people are suffering. People are, are leading lives that are really hard and harsh. Some people are running away from their home country, not because they want to come to America or to go to Australia or to go to Western Europe. No, it's because they just can't take it anymore. War is all over the place. They are killing people. And sometimes your children die uh, right in front of you. And so some people are asking today, does God care about all of this? Well, we aim to answer that question today, friend. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for being with us. Now, as we seek to open the word of God, would you join me in a moment of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, please come and be with us. Help us to open our heart's door to you so that you may come in, sup with us, and we with you. Help us to understand you better, to have a closer glimpse of who you are. Draw us to you, and then prepare our hearts for heaven and home. For we ask these things in the worthy name of Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Does God care? Does Jesus care? That's the question we want to answer with you today. Does he really care? Someone said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because how much you know isn't going to help me. How much you care just might. And so today, based on all the historic, religious, and personal knowledge that we have today about God, Jesus, do you have questions about whether he cares about you? You probably do. John chapter 15 verse 13 begins to answer that question for us by saying, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Why would, why, why would Jesus do that? He laid it down freely when they grabbed him in the garden of, of Gethsemane and Peter chopped off the ear of the soldier, Jesus said to him, Peter, you think if I wanted to, that I couldn't turn my eyes toward heaven and the Father would send me legions of angels. In other words, he would send me thousands, if necessary, millions of angels. But a little crowd of soldiers were not enough to send millions, not even thousands. They didn't, they, I, I allowed them to, to hold me. In fact, the reason why Judas brought the soldiers to capture Jesus is because Judas had seen how Jesus had escaped a mob before. They tried to kill him, and he just disappeared among the crowd because the Bible said his time was not yet. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when he finally, as the Bible would put it, when the fullness of time was come. He laid down his life. He says, no man taketh my life. I lay it down for you. Amen. Romans 5.10, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Isn't that logical? Doesn't that make sense? We were once enemies of God, even whilst we were his enemies. He sent his son to die so that he may reconcile us to him. What a thing, friend. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, and you'll understand why I'm rushing a little bit because... Uh, our sermon is a little lengthy today, but I want you to capture all of it. So it's, 
it would be a good thing if you write down the passages of Scripture and then you can re, re, review it or, or revisit with it later on. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Friends, we were like that lost sheep. Knowing that it was lost, but didn't know the way home. But you know what? The shepherd of the sheep knew that it was lost, and he went to find it. And when he found it, laid it over his shoulder, and told the neighbors around, I have found my sheep that was lost. Amen. Praise God, friend. We are reconciled, brought back to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Before we go any further, let's take a closer look at what he who cares for us has done. Let's take a look. Number one, compare his love to that of others. He doesn't simply say he loves. He demonstrates it by dying for you and me. He is not like human beings who say, hey, I love you, you know. But really, those are mere words. Jesus demonstrated his love by dying for you and me. Number two, even though we declare ourselves his enemies, he seeks what's best for our welfare, even if it means dying for us. God wants what's best for us. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Come to me and live. And so, my friend, it doesn't matter what. Number three, the letter to the Ephesians declares that he went looking for us to bring us back to God, even though it cost him his blood. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, where they would normally meet with God every evening, in the cool of the day, God would meet them there and he would walk around with them and chat with them and educate them, enlighten them. They were not there. And so God started to call as if he didn't know where they were, because he did. See, God is omniscient. He knows everything. And so... Adam, where art thou? Where are you? Eventually, as he's calling, he's moseying towards Adam and Eve because he knows where they are. Eventually, when he bumps into them, what are you doing there? They said, well, before they even answered, he said, did you? Did you eat of that fruit I told you not to eat of? And they confessed that they had. Ladies and gentlemen, God knew from the very start what they had done. But he refused to let them go. He came looking for them. He is doing the same thing today. He is looking for you and me. Amen. He loves you, my friend. He cares about you. Yes, Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 13 says something. That is so hopeful and encouraging. For God is speaking. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil. God isn't interested in your past. He's interested in your present and future. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you good things. He wants to give you a future and a hope. There are those of you out there today who seem to have no hope. You are struggling. You, you can't make ends meet. And some of you perhaps are even thinking, man, I, I better end it all. Hey, God has a plan for you right now. Amen. Then you will call upon me, he says, and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. My friend, 
When you think about God and you want to talk to him, he's already waiting and listening to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, the one thing about God, friend, he doesn't want partial commitment on your part or mine. He wants all of you. If you're going to give him, give him all of you. Make your life, your body, a living sacrifice to God. And therefore, my friend, he says, as a result, when you would come pray, I will listen to you. When you seek for me, you will find me. And when you search for me, you will find me because you're searching with all your heart. Wow. What a promise of hope. Our God is an awesome God. He does not reign in a vacuum nor in obscurity. He jealously watches over us from the womb to the grave. And so, my friend, the problem is, although he plans our lives for us, we keep messing it up. So he ends up doing more repair than execution. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, whilst he wants to push us forward, to make us grow, to get us into new pasture, he has to keep pulling us back to clean our mess and then setting us up straight again. Oh, friend, that's not what God wants for us. He says he has good thoughts and hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, Now the God of hope, yeah, mm -hmm. the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My friend, God is thinking about you with every breath you take. He, he refuses to leave you. Unless, my friend, unfortunately, some of us, we close our own probation. We refuse to come to him. He walked into the temple, I've told you before, and saw those guys studying the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And he says, you guys study the scripture because you believe in them, you will find eternal life. But they are they that testify of me. I'm here and you won't come to me. My friend, knowledge is good, but wisdom is even greater. Getting to know God, the Bible says, is wisdom. And so therefore, friend, the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Some of you are suffering from some form of stress, medical situation, financial hardship, relational issues, and the future looks grim. What should you do with your life? Unfortunately, some are even contemplating suicide. Please, friend, don't do it. There is good news. Let me share it with you. In the book of Psalm, chapter 121, verses 1 to 8, the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, where does my help come from? You know, he says to the mountains because in, back in the day, there were lots of idols hidden in the mountains and the people would go up there and worship those idols. Well, the psalmist knew differently. Should I lift up my eyes to the mountains to worship the idols? No. He asks, where does my help come from? He answers, my help comes from from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Yeah. I don't, I don't trust 
in that pretty car I have in the garage. I don't trust, by the way, I'm not talking about myself. I don't have a pretty car. I don't trust in that fat bank account that I have. I know I'm a poor guy just like you. I don't trust in all the, 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 the properties that I have. No. My help comes from the Lord, Amen. the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you, and yes, God watches over you. Don't let the devil fool you. God is with you and watches over you. He will not, he, he, he does not slumber. In other words, friend, he doesn't sleep. Indeed, he who watches over Israel neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Trust him, my friend, because that's what he will do for you. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forever. Amen. Yes, my friend, God loves you. He cares about you. His heart aches when we turn our back on him. You know, I saw a movie one day. And a uh, guy was suffering psychological pain because his whole family, from his father down to his last child, had been killed. And a friend of his, he was thinking of going to get revenge. And a friend of his said, go with God. And he said to the friend, God is going to stay out of this one. My friend, we need him in our life with every step we take. In fact, somebody says, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. We need him, my friend. Does Jesus care? You bet ya. He does. Someone might be saying at this time, Pastor, you think the way you do because you have a fat check coming every month and, and you don't experience any of the issues mentioned. Friend, you wouldn't want to exchange places with me right now. The only difference might be, I know he cares. You think I don't have issues, my friend? I do. And sometimes more than many of you. But I've decided, my friend, by the grace of God, even if I suffer physically, one of these days, heaven is going to be cheap enough. Yes. Lamentations chapter 3. Verses 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. We have done wrong. We deserve death. The soul that sinneth, Ezekiel says, it shall die. And so Lamentations is saying here, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Hallelujah to God. Amen. They are new Amen. every morning. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. What a God. Amen. What a God. He loves you, my friend. He cares for you. Does Jesus care? Yes, he does. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18 says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, and mine is, my friend. In the last five years, I've had 
a quadruple bypass surgery. I've had uh, a kidney transplant. I've had all kinds of things, ladies and gentlemen, happen to me. And so you're asking, then pastor, what are you doing up here? Oh, I can't remain silent in the face of the treachery the enemy is trying to lay for us. I need to let you know, my friend, that God indeed cares for you. So I read this again. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, meaning the body. Yet the inward man, the mind, is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, what we are going through right now, friend, may be considered a light affliction. I know you are suffering and you feel like you are having to carry the whole world on your shoulder. But no, friend, God never allows you to bear more than you can. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Yeah, you've heard the song, friend. My child, joy comes in the morning. And so, those light afflictions only last for a moment. It is, there, it is by, by God's grace, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Those things you see around you, they're going to fade away, my friend. You, you bought a beautiful uh, refrigerator, a beautiful car. After a while, no matter how well you try to keep it, it degrades. You have to change it. Those are the, those things that we see. They are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Some at this point might think, well, pastor, God may want to do this, but I am such a disappointment in life I better not even try. Well, here's where the apostle challenges us with the ability of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him, <laughs> hallelujah to God, now unto him that is able, hallelujah, Amen. now unto him that is able, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Did you get that, friend? God is able to do exceeding abundantly more or above what we can ask or even think. So don't put God in a little box and say, well, God, you know I need $1,000, but if you would give me $500, i would really appreciate it. Ask God for more than what you want. Trust him. He loves you. He cares for your good. And so you can't even begin to ask or think of what you really need from God because he can give you abundantly, exceedingly more than you can ask or think. My pastor's wife said, our problem stems from the fact that we take our burdens to the cross. We talk to Jesus about them. Then when leaving, we pick them up again, not trusting God can take care of them. Don't you think it's time for us to trust him? Amen. 
It's time for us to trust. Leave your burden at the foot of the cross, my friend. Let Jesus take care of it because he cares for you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your anxiety, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Amen. Praise God. All the anxiety that you're going through, all the issues, throw it at the feet of Jesus. Because, friend, he wants you to know he cares for you. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 to 6 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I'm going to repeat that, friend, just in case you missed it. This is coming from where? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. In other words, friend, don't waver. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. When I get my uh, tax returns, I do. When I don't, man, it means that I can't trust God to do anything for me. No. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. That's who God is, my friend. You got to trust him. For in trusting him, he will direct you in the way you should turn. I don't want you to think that I am seeking to portray the pastor's life as perfect. No. Far be it from me. I have weaknesses like any one of you. Sometimes I feel discouraged too. But then the Spirit of the Lord comes to remind me of God's promises. Like the one found in Psalm chapter 31 verse 24. So be strong and courageous. All you who put your hope in the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Be strong and courageous. All you who put your hope in the Lord. You remember, some of you have seen the movie, The Ten Commandments. When Israel were trapped between the army of Pharaoh and the Red Sea, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel because at that time, oh, they were in total despair. Total despair. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My friend, sometimes, most times, God does not take time to explain to us what he's doing and why he's doing it or when he's going to do it. Because even if he chose to tell us, we still wouldn't get it. And so be strong and courageous. Here's another beautiful passage. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. Did you hear this? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have the ability to wait on the Lord. He's planning for you. He has good thoughts toward you and a good hope for the future. I want to be honest with you. Inviting Jesus into your life causes the devil to get mad. It is said of a man who was invited to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. 
His response was, I have enough enemies and I don't want the devil to be one of them. What a thing. My friend, he's either your friend or your enemy. You can't have both the devil and God on the same side. Not going to happen. Unfortunately, what he was unaware of was a few passages of scripture which reassures us that we are on good footing when God is on our side. John 1 verse 12, but as many as receive him, to them gave he the power, the authority, the right to become sons and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah to God. If you receive, if you choose to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my friend, you have become the son or daughter of the living God. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Why should I care what the devil thinks or does? My friend, he's already doing a lot. He's trying to kill me. And maybe one day God will allow him. Because you see, the consequences of sin is death. But I want you to know, my friend, we are or can be in the hand of God. And when we are in the hand of God, there's absolutely nothing the devil can do. If he does anything, it's because God allows him to. So Psalm 27 verses 1 and 2 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Yeah, when the enemy comes to me, friend, the Bible says Jesus is going to lift up a wall, as it were, to protect me. Amen. And so why should I be afraid? Isaiah 41.10 says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Say praise the Lord, friend. Yeah. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Can you imagine that? And the Bible talks about the right, right hand. It is denoting power. And authority. And that's where God is going to hold you, friend. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He is not doing like some people do. Go and I'll, I'll come with you and don't show up. No. God is going to be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Oh, my friend. Do you remember the patriarch Job? He went through a series of catastrophic events in his life to the extent that his wife suggested, why don't you curse God and die? In all of his pain and suffering, he admonished her by saying, you speak like a foolish woman. Why would you say a thing like that? However, after a while, Job thought he was entitled to an explanation from God. Instead of God answering Job's question, God said, You really want answers? Then answer me this. My thoughts in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. 
are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God entered into a conversation with Job and started to ask Job, can you tell me how Orion and the Pleiades were stretched out and on what foundation they lay? And Job just had to shut up. He didn't have answers for those questions. See, friend, Because of all of the above, we conclude with these three passages of Scripture. Listen to them. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. So no matter where you are right now, What's going on with you right now? Your doctors can't find a cure for you. Your job cannot provide enough money for you to pay your children's tuition and to feed them and to clothe them and to keep your apartment. But my friend, whilst those things are impossible, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do as a result. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah to God. You see, because I depend on God. When you depend on God, Paul is saying to the Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can't do it without Christ. It is in him you've got to learn to do it. Matthew 11, verse 29, as our final passage. Take my yoke upon you. Jesus is speaking. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come on, friend. Have you ever seen two oxen yoked together? When they are yoked together, friend, they move as one. The one can't go without the other. That's how Jesus wants to be with you and me. He wants us to apply his yoke on us. Hook us up and let us take that journey with him. Are you willing to do that today? You ask, does Jesus care? Yes, he does. He wants to save you. He wants to lighten your burden. And if you wait on him, he will do what seemed to be impossible possible for you today would you come to him if you want to friend I can't force you neither will God let's talk to him right now father please come and be with your people touch them encourage their hearts give them hope restore courage in their hearts. Let them, O oh Father, I pray, give them the power to yoke themselves with you so that we can all together journey with you so that when Jesus comes, not only, Lord, would we be saved then, but the things that we are going through here on earth would have become a very small matter knowing that God is with us. Hear us and bless us, we pray. For we ask it in the worthy name of Jesus 
and for his sake. And the church around the world said, Amen. My friend, God bless you so. Uh, you may see it on the screen. Uh, we're looking for some help, uh, some technical help, computer help. Uh, people who know uh, about the camera, uh, about the computer, about online services. Uh, our engineer, uh, he has so much to do. He, he needs some help. And so if there's anyone out there who's willing to help, please give us a call. Text us. Email us. And let us know that you're willing uh, to, to be of some help. And uh, if, by the way, somebody out there, whether you are in London, England, or you are in New South Wales in Australia, it doesn't matter, or St. Lucia, and you want to sing, you need to, you, you, you can go ahead and, and practice and submit a song. When you are, when, when, when you are videotaping yourself, you need to do it horizontally, not, not uh, vertically. You need to put your, your camera horizontally uh, to record yourself. Send it in, and we will definitely consider uh, playing them. And uh, all of us together can worship the Lord, okay? Until then, may God bless you richly. May he, he cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>